Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. We'll be focusing on our 2017 uh, Q4 releases. My name is Ryan Rippey. I'm the Customer Enablement Manager here at Kinexus, and I'm joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Greg Jacobson, our CEO and co-founder. It's an honor, sir. Thank you, Ryan. That was unnecessary. <laughs> I am simply your humble, humble servant. Uh, Ryan, I'm super excited about this. I think if you follow along with our individual releases, there's not going to be much new here, right? We're going to really go over the highlights. But what I think is great is seeing what we did over a three, four release, you know, story or, or arc, if you will. And, and you can see kind of how the product is moving in general. And, and then kind of seeing the highlights of the last three to four releases all at once, I think there's going to be some connections that are going to be made that you're going to be able to think of using the product in different ways and adding more value that without them being kind of done in this, this sequence, you wouldn't have really picked up on. Cause I know I learned, you know, kind of where we were going, if you will, um, from putting this together. So I am really excited to get into this. As am I. So to, to keep in mind, we've had four releases uh, during Q4 of 2017, 2.2.0 through 2.2.3. And all of these releases were huge. Uh, so the goal of today's webinar is let's go through our, our biggest features that we've kind of uh, gone through and, and picked out from each release. Uh, we'll do sort of the, the, the what the feature, how it works in Kinexus, and a little bit about you know, why you would want to use that and, and what would be a, a common use case for, for some of our customers. Huge, huge, huge. Okay. So right. to get things started, 2.2.0, uh, this was for, for all of our, our customers who were able to, to join us for our user conference last year. Uh, this was our, our big reveal. Uh, came out one of our big reveals. What, well, our big reveal, yeah, for 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 that uh, that uh, specific <laughs> conference, um, and, and for for that release, I mean, that was the one of the biggest releases, and, and every release since then has been huge. Again, huge. Uh, but just coming on to Kinexus at that time, uh, 2.2.0 really changed uh, the look and feel of Kinexus. And one of the first big features that we revealed in that release was Gantt View. And as you can see here, we have an example of a, of a Gantt View, um, a project plan card that we've set up here in Kinexus that's in the Gantt View. Gantt View is, is allowing you to, to be able to see uh, your projects, improvements, and tasks uh, over a, a certain time period. Um, you can see there, there's some arrows in here that are, that are linking um, different tasks uh, based off of dependencies. We've implemented the, the, the status color within the Gantt view of being able to see what's active, what's new, what's completed. Um, and, and this has been something that our customers were, were looking for and we were very excited to be able to introduce because when you're looking at top-down strategy deployment, it's, it's a really beneficial way to view things in this mode. Yeah, and Gantt view really was the culmination of five releases that led up to that. We completely refactor tasks out of a lot of functionality then we ended up creating dependencies where you can have really improvements dependent on tasks, dependent on projects in any order or shape that makes sense. And then the kind of the third phase of that, if you will, was visualizing this in, in this kind of linear. And, and really the, the story behind the story here is that our customers are pushing us more and more to give the real critical project uh, management functionality yep. In, in embedding that in Kinexus. And, and we think that you know, projects and, and doing larger scoped improvement efforts are a part of continuous improvement. And I think we can provide all of the most critical project management features without making things too complicated. Right. And I'm really, really happy with, with how Gantt View and how our project management features have uh, come along here in Kinexus. Yeah, this, this, this was a, a huge feature within that release that immediately we saw a lot of customers taking advantage of. Um, so let's move into custom. How do you get into Gantt View real quick? Sure, sure, sure. So from a, from a user standpoint, uh, coming in and, and editing this card by clicking on the ellipses, the Gantt View will now be available under the view option here, where let's say you are in a detail list or Kanban that all of our Kinexus customers are familiar with. You can now switch over to Gantt View um, and, and through the Gantt View be able to, to see uh, all of those nested improvements, projects, tasks, um, all, through, all through this uh, view here in Kinexus. Great. So I, I want to talk custom layout, Greg. This is something that 2.2.0 uh, first introduced uh, our first ability to to play with custom layout. Uh, we we have we have a great 
product team that continues to go in and, and enhance the, the, the functionality and the configurability of that custom layout. Um, in honor of, of, of Matt Banna, who's obviously one half of the Banna Ruby show, I'm gonna go into, into our other demo setup environment because I wanna use his famous example of the uh, storage org so we can really see Great. the custom layout built out for us. So we now have coming out in, in the most recent release is probably, is it our third or, or fourth pass at custom layout, where when we see how we are configuring this specific template, the idea is, is we really want to be able to capture what your, for example, A3s look like in Kinexus. And so what, what I've noticed over the last five, six years is that the the more we can make this seamless transition from going from your paper systems or your Excel-based systems into Kinexus, and the easier it is to increase adoption, it, the easier it is to kind of get into the system and going, oh, okay, yeah, this is exactly how we do our A3s. I, I get what we've done here. And so going ahead and, and really kind of clearing off the, the panel and then letting our customers define how they want to lay things out on the screen has been, I mean, not not to make joke of the word huge again, but it really has been huge to increase that adoption. And I think the the custom layout is such a great example of us having partnership with our customers because quite frankly, we didn't get it right on the first uh, pass of this. And it was such a complicated feature that we're now doing our fourth version, which isn't that we kind of knock and rebuild. It was, oh, well, we didn't think of this and oh, how could we do this? And so, we have continued in every version since to, to make refinements and tweaks. And I think dot four of this version of uh, custom layout is gonna be what's gonna take us probably into the next several months and, and, and into 2018. Now keep in mind, in order to get your templates to look like this, you need to interact with your customer experience leads because this is kind of behind the, behind the scenes settings to get it to look like this. Yeah. So Please reach out to your CE representative if you want to take full advantage of the, the custom layout functionality. Um, this is all done on the back end. Uh, just kind of pointing out, Greg, some of the things I noticed right away as we look at this custom layout. Uh, we've gone in and we've, we've decided to use the, the name of the template here. We've gotten rid of some of the, the um, extra things such as the ID number, the, um, uh, the icon for for this a3 we've moved we have the, these header columns up here now showing the the title of our a3 uh, our team our due dates so for those people who are familiar with kind of what that typical uh, kinexus template looks like you can see how those things are being shifted up and then and then following that that a3 format you know we see our background current condition we have these specific sections where we can do a minimum and maximum height on to be able to come in and edit those details You'll notice we have two different task types with our countermeasures and tasks being incorporated here in the A3. Uh, for, for KPIs, and we'll talk a little bit about this later, we have the ability to, here we have a, a chart that's been added into this specific field. Uh, and I believe we have a couple of images that, that are available now here as well. So there's really a lot that we can do with the custom layout. And you can see this is just one of many examples of how powerful this this functionality is. And, and A, A3 is probably the poster child of how people are using custom layout. We've actually had a lot of our customers, a lot of you guys, a lot of our tribe push us in different directions on how to use this. I think that the take home message is if you've ever wanted the screen layout to be different, now is your time to take a look at this. If you looked at this in our first release of this and haven't revisited it, and there's something else that you want changed, please come back and revisit it because we've added uh, just a, a, a really, a lot of power behind this. And I, I think we can really create the picture that you guys are looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Let's jump back into what we have for our agenda. So uh, the next thing we have here was the images within fields. So we showed an example of that in the custom layout of how you're able to add that image. You're able to put a, a chart thumbnail for any of those charts let's you have. Let's go ahead and show that again. Sure. In case you missed it. So this image down here, the way we've gone in and kind of configured this specific card is if we were going and edit this, um, what you'll notice is there's a little plus sign available on those specific um, detail fields that you want to be able to add an image or a chart thumbnail, where if we were to select this, we can come in and add that, that specific image, or we can also add a chart thumbnail and yep. grab something existing. And, and that's system. pulling off of the files that are associated with this, this item, this project. Or, and so really we're kind of allowing you to recreate 
your prior paper-based A3s and prior Excel or Word-based A3s and, and provide all that um, configurability and flexibility right within the Kinexus platform. So. Very and cool. what's really great is, is, of course, that drag and drop of being able to grab an image right from yep. your desktop and, and pull it into one of those fields. So it's super convenient. Now, the next thing we have here is the ability now to like, acknowledge, and bookmark in Kinexus. And if I jump into just an example project here, where this shows up here on the very top, uh, next to our status picker, uh, we have this like option, the acknowledge, and bookmark. So this is funny because we internally realized before before this feature was added, all we had was the thumbs up. And we internally realized that we were actually communicating different things when we clicked that. Some of us were saying, hey, we, we like what you had to say there, or we agree with it. Other people were just saying, hey, I want to let you know that I saw it. And uh, then there was even a third functionality that some of our customers were saying, which was, hey, I want a quick way to just bookmark something so it will generate, uh, it will show up on one of my bookmark lists that, so I can basically tag things to a really quick, almost like your bookmarks on your on your web pages in, in a browser. And so what we ended up realizing that 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 really there's these are three distinctive feature function and communication. And so we blew all those out. And I, I think I think we've really captured kind of the, the major use cases of what people are trying to kind of generally communicate and, and it extended beyond just which it used to just be on the comments and then we extended it to the entire to the entire well actually it was on the entire improvement and it kind of said one thing and it, on the comments it kind of said another thing mm -hmm. and I, I think we really we really nailed it this time yeah so comment section we can like and acknowledge yep. when those comments come through on our notification screen we can like and acknowledge right through there and then just in terms of, of kind of the the use behind these you can filter down whether it's through a project improvement task list based off of those specific items that you've liked acknowledged or bookmarked so moving right along, the, the last big thing in 2.2.0 was the idea of organized workflow. Mm -hmm. And what I did, Greg, was from the create dropdown, I show kind of uh, here within this certification or example and enablement general, there's now this idea of kind of grouping different um, workflow templates together based off of uh, perhaps what your role is in the organization, what you have access into, or maybe what your process is. It's a way to kind of clean up um, what, what's being displayed from that create dropdown. And, and this is almost like a menu option that we're showing you here because we've we've logged into what we refer to as the customer experience demo setup team. So we get a lot of feedback from people. Hey, I wanna see what other people are doing in the system. And so Ryan and his team have essentially created almost a examples of a whole bunch of different things. We We wouldn't imagine any single individual customer to have as complicated of a create menu here. Um, I think, though, that it, it does show you the examples of if you want to put a bunch of things in a folder, you can do that now. And we really um, compart not compartmentalized, but um, made made the entire create button experience compact because we were we do have customers now that have you know five and eight and ten templates, and and the old style of that was was quite cumbersome. And just on the back end, I mean, we have the ability to tie a specific template to a role, so it'll only show up if you have that role. Uh, we can make things stand alone, for example, like a task that you don't want to have uh, nested underneath a specific other workflow type. Um, we could have it so that it can only show up under specific uh, workflow types and, and, and sort of that parent type. Um, so there's a lot of ways that we can kind of uh, create that organized workflow, that standard uh, process, if you will. So let's jump over to 2.2.1 here, Greg. So as as CI experts, and, and I think that it's mostly our, our CI experts that are, are logging in and watching these kinds of videos, we can help create whatever experience you want for whatever persona you have in your organization. So your frontline users can have a really simplified and limited templates, whereas a manager or even an executive can have different levels and different abilities and, and different workflows in the system. Right. So looking at our, our first feature here, chart refactor, and this was really that, that transitioning of a chart into a workflow. Mm -hmm. um, so now when you come into a chart, you have the ability to have a team, dates, um, details, files, links, comments, timeline, everything that you would see on your project improvement and task template. And so this is moving us to being able to do strategy deployment even better. 
what we realized is is that when people are doing sophisticated or not even sophisticated just they're doing strategy deployment in kinexus it's great to think of a chart as just part of a top level workflow and to be able to show that kind of a relationship on how everything is aligned required us to, to kind of bite the bullet and make a chart kind of a standalone workflow within itself that you could then nest projects and and tasks and, and improvements onto because it can actually be the focal point of, of how you are thinking through kind of putting all your improvement work in there. And vice so, versa, being able to, to, to nest that chart with any sort of project improvement that, that you have in the system. All right, so next up, the, the idea of linking in Kinexus. So I'll go back to, to just another project example we have here. So And so you'll remember before yep. we did that chart refactor, you could basically link charts in a project or an improvement. And when we made charts their own Kind of entity it provided us the flexibility and the space to do more with linking right so the, if, if everyone remembers how, how linking worked originally in kinexus it was the ability to add um you know a web link of some sort whether it was a website maybe it was a a google drive link now in kinexus when you come to to the link section we still have that web link functionality but we've added this this item option as well where you're able to select a specific item in kinexus that you want to tie to this project improvement task or chart your work so whereas i think nesting is is more rigid it's it's more the kind of alignment and you want to see how things kind of maybe cascade or how they kind of go up and down linking is a little bit more loose association where you can kind of do one to many or many to one and, and do a whole bunch of uh, things that are a little bit more flexible. Exactly. Okay, the the attribute note hover over, this was a nice little feature. I went ahead and, and so for, for attributes, when you're selecting one of those attribute values, you have the ability to add a note to that. And so the feedback from our customers was, if you're working off of, for example, this, this board here and want to be able to kind of see uh, what that attribute note is on the attribute without clicking in, you can now hover over the attribute and that note will be displayed right there for you on that board. This was such an obvious thing in retrospect, but we didn't think of it because, of course, you guys are constantly pushing us to using the product in, in kind of new and inventive ways. And so we had a customer who literally was really using these attributes in a um, really meaningful way, almost like a Kanban board, if you will, where they could look through you know, 20 to 40 locations very quickly and over about eight or 10 different attributes could quickly see what was in the red. And when they found something that was in the red or in the yellow that they wanted further detail, it was extremely cumbersome to click into that when they simply wanted to know what's the note based on that. Yep. And so though that type of feedback for us and us understanding what you're trying to accomplish allows us to really decrease that click friction in, in a lot of cases. And so. our dev team loves getting kind of those tickets submitted because those are quick, easy things that they can go in and, and take a look at. And a huge value. Huge. Yeah, that wasn't even intended to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the last thing in 2.2.1, Greg, here is, is the ad hoc field. And I have a couple of examples that we can walk our audience through. Um, the first was, is of course, I went the, the five whys route of, of coming in here now and having this option that we could um, have, have a, a, a why um, column here and then adding in our description of, of what that why might be and then being able to add more rows and really build out um, sort of that that ad hoc functionality. So the the five whys to me is the poster child example for ad hoc fields, just like A3 is the poster child for custom layout. <coughs> Excuse me. Having said that, we're finding lots of different ways that you can you can use ad hoc because that's one of the things that we love to do, which is not build out a kind of rigid, unflexible feature, but to build out a framework that people so so what are we what are we seeing here, Ryan? So an example, and I found this as I was kind of just diving in here, is is looks like we're we're going through the PDCA cycle here, and they have the the different sections for our process step, expectation, result, and learnings. Um, so to see this from the create screen again, this is taking advantage of the ad hoc field um, that we can configure within your template. Um, you're able to add in these these specific column headers, be able to type in the free text of, of, of what information you want to add to the column. So this is more of a, a PDCA so example. Essentially ad hoc means that you can add more of the number of these fields as needed, or you cannot do that. And there's about a half dozen different configuration options that can really solve a whole bunch of different use cases. Yes. Super powerful. Yes. 
think we had a, a specific episode release for that. Um, so 2.2.2, first uh, a small but very big feature for us, um, the, the be able, being able to search in a card. Right. Um, so now in addition to kind of our, our expand and our ellipses, we have a little magnifying glass where when we select this, we can go ahead and, and search within our list um, for let's say a specific task. Maybe we wanted our onboarding tasks uh, within this implementation plan. And that'll filter down that for us so that we can really dive in and find specifically what we're looking for within a card. Another great example of, of click friction here, whereas, yes, you could do this, took about three clicks, and then you were kind of mentally in a different screen. And so able to embed that right there on the title to make that more seamless. I, I use that feature all the time now. So next we have, we touched on this a little bit, the, the chart thumbnail preview. So we saw the example of how you can add that chart thumbnail image within a specific maybe project or improvement. Um, but more importantly now within a, a chart list example here, um, this is a chart list in detail view where we're now able to scroll through our KPIs in this case and see the, the image of that chart here on our board. And if I was to go ahead and, and click in, obviously I would be able to uh, work off of you know, updating my team, my dates, or actually editing the, the data within my specific chart. It's a nice Pareto chart you pulled up. Oh, thank you. So, so I think the why behind this, and, and I'm, I'm trying to focus on kind of why did we add this, we, we're seeing a lot of use of strategy deployment and, and people are creating strategy deployment boards and they want just the ability to quickly look into information without having to get off of that board, click into the chart and, and referencing that. Whereas, so now you can create truly a dashboard um, view of things, quickly look at the data and see if there's something that you want to dive in and get more information on. I will say that that, that thumbnail image is saved every time someone makes an update to the chart. So if you're not seeing that on one of your charts and you think you should be seeing that, simply go into the chart and, and simply open up the edit and save it and it'll create that image the first time. Those are just need, needing to cycle through one time. Yep. So Greg, we introduced the, the concept of frontline user and, and wallboard user. And so I wanna show an example of kind of what that frontline user um, looks like here. So this was really in response to a couple different things. One, we kept hearing this is, the interface you created is too complicated for the vast majority of people going into Kinexus. People that are managers that are really driving the improvement work, CI leaders that are coaching the improvement work, and, and sometimes executives, although sometimes executives like the stream down view as well, are okay with having a lot of power. But if for a lot of times, you know, 70, 80% of the frontline folks, could you create a more simplified experience for them? And we thought through this and, and we came up with frontline view, which Ryan's gonna talk to you here in a second. And, and the board view is kind of another kind of use case that came to us. People said, hey, want to put Kinexus on, a, on the wall, on the board, but your wall board view isn't quite what we were looking for because when you go up and engage with wall board view, you can actually turn it off a wall board view. Then you can start entering data as whoever was logged in. So could we get an experience that you could literally just put Kinexus on a wall People could interact with it, get whatever information they want from it, but they don't have the ability to edit the data in it. And so two very different use cases, but both we think critical for spreading continuous improvement at your organization. So, so yeah, as you can see here with, with Abby Lane here, our frontline user, when she logs into Kinexus, she has a very specific um, view of things, very specific access. She's a frontline user. Um, it looks like she doesn't have the ability to create anything. So she's actually working off of those boards that we've configured to be frontline user boards. So we have a default dashboard here with her tasks, her projects, improvements. Um, you'll see she's not able to, to edit these cards at all. Um, she's, she no longer has the uh, advanced toolbar on the left hand side of the screen and she has a limited number of boards that she has access to so she's working off her default dashboard she also has some some basics training uh, of course i had to throw that in there just to, to promote the um, ryan ruby basics training 101 um, but but this is giving her a much more simple feel and 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 um you know, day-to-day -day work in Kinexus. So so what the, the big takeaways here are, one, the left nav bar has gone away. So kind of that potential area of complexity and confusion is, is gone away. And also a much more limited number of boards 
are being shown. So you guys can configure which boards you want frontline users to show. And of course, we I would be very surprised if anyone would um, configure where a frontline user couldn't submit something, but we're showing you kind of even the level of, uh, of sophistication that the configuration is, is that we've kind of completely removed the, the create button. Now, this is also what a board user would look like in that they would not have the ability to create off of that screen because you wouldn't really know who is creating it because you're, you're logged in as this kind of, you know, board, it's not really even a user. You're just logged in in board mode, if you will. Right. Yeah. And we'll see here, Greg, I've, I've configured the, the wall board. And, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, the, the wall board was essentially what our slideshow mode was. So right. now we've we've gone ahead and, and switched that over. So everybody still has access to, to slideshow and Kinexus. But looking here at, at this board user, like you mentioned, no create button. Well, we actually can't come in here and edit any of like the profile information. Um, we have very few boards here that we're going to be able to come through and kind of click in. We can see KPIs. And the idea is let's go ahead and, and put this up on a screen where everybody can come over and, and kind of take a look, expand if necessary. Or, or uh, share a computer even. Sure. Yeah. But the, the point here is, is that this person, a person that comes up to this interface can't log this person out. They can click around, see the information they want to see, see what people are working on but are not able to, for instance, comment or... Yeah, you wouldn't be able to edit the team or the dates or anything in here. You just be able... So it's all visual, really. All visual. For the wall yeah. board. So with the purposes of time, Greg, I want to jump back here and, and we have uh, a couple more things within 2.2.3. Um, first being the people list cards. Um, so I've gone ahead and, and added an example here at the bottom here of, of top improvers. Um, this was a, a, a big... Uh, request from our from our customers of, of being able to kind of put um, the the information you would normally see within our, our, our people list yep. uh, to be able to visualize that in a card on a board. Um, this example is kind of taking a look at those specific users in the system and and, and the badges, kind of the credibility that they have of, of what they've done in the system. Um, and go ahead. A couple major use cases here. One people are really pushing us on the certification side of things. People have been for years doing things like A3 training and green belt or yellow belt, different types of improvement certifications, tracking that in kind of typically as projects, and then giving different people in the system those um, certifications. Now we've added badges and people love badges. And now people are saying, okay, I want a list of people that either meet a certain criteria let me, you know, let me celebrate people that have, have this certain badge or let me get a, a list of people that are, are, are currently qualifying for a certain kind of certification and really expanding the, the people filter, making the ability to create people list and then putting those lists on cards is, is a really key part of that. Yeah, so just from a functionality standpoint, coming into the, the, the plus sign here on your board, being able to select that people list, once you have the people list, being able to work off of those filters of exactly uh, what you want to see on that card. And this all, again, stemmed from, from that people section uh, here on the advanced toolbar where uh, you can come in here and maybe uh, add in the specific columns you want represented. And then if you come in and filter, you have the ability to maybe create a new list that you always want to come back to, or again, add that list to a board. So our last feature that we want to go ahead and take a look at here is the sum and or average number field calculation. And what I did here, Greg, is, is you take a look at this improvements card. Yeah. Um, there, there's a financial impact. So within each of these improvements, we've added a number field um, that, that's grabbing now, as I scroll down, the total and the average um, is now being displayed here within this list. That's great. Now that's uh, something we internally use a lot. You know, We at Kinexus are one of the biggest users of Kinexus. And so sometimes sometimes we have tickets or improvement efforts that are a little bit of a guilty pleasure kind of thing, like, oh, we could really use that. And there was just immediate, as soon as we started kind of advertising that feature, we had so many customers say, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. So um, let us know. That's something, again, that we need to configure on the back end if you want to call them to be able to have that feature. So. Yeah, and, and so this card has that, that that number field column in here. And, and what we've done on the back end is you can add in like a percentage. You see the dollar sign. We can have all that configured so that it'll display exactly like this for you on your card. Greg, that's that, that actually wraps us up. I wish we had another 30 minutes that, that we could talk about. So, Ryan, tell me about what 
you and, and Matt Banna have started. I know y'all are, are doing you know, more programmatic trainings um, throughout this year. You added, what did y'all add last Thursday? So last Thursday, um, Bannon and myself had our second uh, Bannon Rippy show, the, the training team office hours, where we took a look at um, all of the different um, things that you could do within your templates, all the types great. of fields, attributes, et cetera. We got a, a really great turnout, a lot of great feedback. So we're gonna look to expand upon that and start to narrow down on um, specific use cases, um, specific audiences and, and, and what have you. So we're, we're really pumped to kind of so see where that goes. We brought Ryan on last year to, to lead our enablement. And if, if the word enablement, uh, is a little cryptic to you. One way you could think of it is training. He, his goal and his role and his future team is going to be all about making sure that our Kinexus customers are getting the most out of the platform. Uh, and, and in the spirit of, of us always doing PDCA cycles on, on everything we do, one of the things that was really obvious is there were two kind of groups of people that showed up last Thursday. And so I think you'll look to, to see kind of two tracks there mm -hmm. in the future, more of an advanced type of a scenario and then more of a more of a I don't want to say basic, but more of a front line, sure. um, kind of the, the bread and butter of Kinexus. I also, before we go, I want to let you know about our next webinar. You know, Mark Graben is uh, really the person that leads and has done just a phenomenal job with our, our webinar series. We're, we're constantly trying to be a part of and contribute to and expand the knowledge of continuous improvement in general. And on February 8th, Jess Orr is gonna be talking about um, A3 thinking. So please register in on that. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our podcast, then please subscribe to it. You get every all of our webinars that come through as podcasts, as well as a lot of other things that we're recording, including Ask Us Any Things that Mark and I do. So it's just a great way on your commute to keep up with what we're up to here at Kinexus and the greater CI community. Awesome, Greg. Well, this this was great. I, I always appreciate having uh, having some of your time, and uh, I, I guess I'll see you at the end of Q1 this year to kind of talk about those releases. Thanks, everyone, and keep improving.